um, start recording as well. Uh, okay, so good morning everyone and uh, thank you for uh, being here today for joining this training on the Machinery Directive. Um, UNI uh, decided to organize this training for Robert Arme Consortium uh, given the importance that this document has for the uh, activities to be done on the project um, and we decided to extend this activity to all partners, also uh, to technical partners, uh, because actually um, if you want to put a new machinery on the market, uh, on the European market at least, you must comply with, with this document. So it's a very important um, thing to, uh, to be aware of. And so the purpose of today's training is first of all to raise your awareness about it, uh, then to explain all the uh, key concepts that are behind it, and also to um, understand all the sections um, uh, that compose the document. Uh, and my colleague Giovanni, that is a technical project manager uh, and an expert in the security field, uh, will uh, give you all the detail and explain um, all about it. Because we know that if you're not expert in the field, it can be not that straightforward to uh, go through all the sections. And maybe we can focus, also, we will focus also on the uh, parts of the document that are more relevant for the um, for the project, uh, such as the parts on the robotics or the machine of movement. And uh, um, so this training is also being recorded, so it will be available later on for uh, all of you, uh, together with slides presented today. Uh, we have, of course, foreseen a Q&A session uh, at the end of the training to uh, answer all your, all your doubts, um, questions, curiosities, uh, and also uh, for any comments you may have. But if something uh, comes up to your mind also during the, the presentation, please, uh, uh, use the chat and we will um, go uh, through it together. And uh, um, I don't want this uh, presentation, uh, this introduction um, last too much. Uh, just pay attention and be ready because we also prepared some questions here and there during the presentation, uh, just to be sure uh, that first of all, that you're paying attention. But secondly, and most importantly, of course, to be sure that everything is clear also to your end. Uh, but as I was saying, uh, now it's time to dive into the content of the training. So I leave the floor to Giovanni uh, to um, go into the detail of the training. So Giovanni, uh, when you want, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Federica. I start uh, sharing my screen. Uh, don't know. Okay. You can Yes, see. I can see it. Okay, perfect. Let me... Um, Okay, perfect. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Mm. I begin by introducing myself. I am a technical project manager in the field of occupational machinery safety um, and leisure safety. I am part of the innovation and development department of UNI, the Italian standardization body. For more than 20 years, I was technical secretary of the Italian and the European technical committees. In particular, the Italian technical committees concerning machine tools, safety of machinery, lists, personal protective equipment. And the European technical committees concerning the wood woodworking machines, the vertical lifting appliances with enclosed carrier the foreground and amusement park machinery, and the motorcycle rider protective clothing. For my work, uh, I had to deepen my knowledge uh, of the content of several European directives, uh, including the machinery directive, and the interaction between the legislative framework uh, and the activities of European standardization bodies. In order to understand why we talk about the machinery directive, let me briefly recall the objectives of the project itself and the legal framework. One of the objectives of the project is to develop a cognitive robot platform that address the complete chain of subcrete application for autonomous construction, maintenance, and monitoring activities of infrastructures. In particular, this project aims to deliver an inspection and reconnaissance mobile manipulator 
with cognitive perception capabilities that choose a multimodal sensor for the high precision modeling of the construction site, endorsed with a metal additive manufacturing manipulator to perform reinforcement of metallic rebar. And a short create and finishing mobile manipulator to perform wet and dry short create through concrete spray casting uh, relied on visual guided robotic manipulation and the human robot shared control. These manipulators, that is robots, are two new machineries. Therefore, as my colleague said during the second plenary meeting, in terms of European legislation, for the construction environment, there is the construction product regulation, but this document uh, will not be the focus of my presentation today because uh, for the machinery, there is this directive, which will be the subject of my presentation. In order for the project to be able to realize the two planned robots, uh, we must first of all define a list of technical requirements. Some of these requirements are linked to the Machinery Directive, which is the core European legislation regulating products of the mechanical engineering industries to be commercialized in the single market. This directive was published in June 2006 and became applicable in December 2009. This directive promotes the free movement of machinery within the single market and guarantees a high level of protection for European workers and citizens. As it is a new approach directive, it promotes harmonization through a combination of mandatory health and safety requirements and voluntary harmonized standards. The machinery directive only applies to products that are to be placed on the European market for the first time. The products are machinery, interchangeable equipment, safety components, lifting accessories, chains, ropes and webbing, removable mechanical transmission devices, and partly completed machinery. As of 2016, the text of the machinery directive is being revised, as it needs updating to improve safety levels further and take account of the latest IT innovations. The revision has transformed the directive into regulation and make it possible to address the challenges that may arise from the technical progress of digitization. The new machinery regulation was published last 29th June as regulation 2023-1230. And uh, we can have another session in the future to focus on what is new in it. The machinery directive is addressed to the manufacturer that is to any natural or legal person who design and or manufactures products covered by this directive and is responsible for the conformity of the products with this directive with a view to its being placed on the market under its own name or trademark or for its own use. In brief, any natural or legal person who places on the market or puts into service products covered by this directive shall be considered a manufacturer. The obligation of the manufacturer are written in Article 5. He shall ensure that he, the, man, the machine satisfies the relevant essential requirement. Annex first. He shall ensure that the technical file is available. And it's seventh. He shall provide in particular the necessary information such as instructions. He shall carry out the appropriate procedures for the 
testing conformity, Article 12. It shall draw up the EC declaration of conformity and ensure that it accompanies the machinery. Annex 7. It shall affix the CE marking, Article 16. The directive uh, allows products uh, to be manufactured in conformity with the uh, directive. Um, no, sorry, the, the machinery directive is also addressed to the European member states because. The European member states shall not prohibit the placing on the market and putting to service in their territory of products which comply with this directive. The directives allow products to be manufactured in conformity with the directive by means of harmonized European standards, provided that first, the references of the standard are published in the official journal of the European Union. Second condition, the harmonized European standards cover the relevant essential requirement. Third condition, the products comply with the harmonized European standards. The consolidated list of all publications in the official journal is downloadable at the website of the Machinery Directive. In Article 5, we read that the manufacturer shall carry out the appropriate procedure for assessing the conformity of the product with the directive. There are three procedures depending on the hazardousness of the machine and the completeness of the harmonized standards. The most dangerous machines are listed in Annex 4 where the machinery is not referred to in Annex 4, the manufacturer shall apply the internal check. Where the machinery is referred in uh, Annex 4 and harmonized standard cover all the relevant essential requirements, uh, the manufacturer can also apply the EC type examination procedure or the full quality assurance procedure. Where the machinery is referred to in Annex 4 and has been manufactured without harmonized standards, he cannot apply the internal check. The body that carry out the assessment of conformity for the most dangerous machine listed in Annex 4 are called notified bodies. Member states shall notify the European Commission or the body which they have appointed. All the notified bodies are listed in NANDO information system. So we have two questions for, for you. Federic, you can start. The first question, uh, the first question is when a new machine is placed on the European market for the first time, it must comply with the essential health and safety requirement and with the harmonized standard, or it must comply with, with the essential health and safety requirement and can be compliant with the harmonized standard. It cannot be compliant with the essential health and safety requirement if it complies with the harmonized standards. It is not necessary to comply with the essential health and safety requirement nor with the harmonized standards. Your choice. Okay, um, perfect. 
So the correct answer is uh, B. Uh, I show you again all the answer. Okay, you can see, I think. Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, why the correct answer is B? Because uh, the essential requirements are mandatory. And the harmonized standards are voluntary. So Annex B is correct, Annex A is wrong. Uh, Annex C is incorrect because harmonized standards shall comply with uh, uh, essential requirement uh, in order to give the machinery presumption of conformity. So and also Annex C is uh, incorrect. Federica, you can go second question. Okay. When does a harmonized standard provide presumption of conformity with the machinery directive? When it has been requested by the European Commission to send and or SENELEC, has been published by the European National Standard Body and it is listed in the European Official Journal. When it has been requested by the European Commission to send and or Senelec, it has been published by send and or Senelec, and it is listed in the European Official Journal. When it has been requested by the European Commission to send and or Senelec, and has been published by an European national standardization body, even if it is not listed in the European Official Journal, when it is requested to send and or send it by stakeholders published by an European national standard body, and this it is listed in the European official journal. Give your answer. Okay. Perfect. The correct answer is A. We can see again of the answer. Okay. The condition to be fulfilled are three. First, the standard shall be considered in a mandate by the European Commission to send and send it. When it is has been required by the European Commission. Second condition: it shall be published as standard by an European national standardization body. Okay. And third, its reference shall be published in the European Official Journal. Answer B is incorrect because SEN and SENELEC are, are associations that bring together the national standardization body of 34 European countries. The EN standards are not published at the European level, but are implemented by the national SEN and SENELEC members as national standards. And uh, they are included in the standards catalog by SEN and SENELEC members. Therefore, an European standard is the same in all 34 countries. Okay. Let me continue my presentation. 
So let me summarize uh, with this slide uh, what has been said uh, so far. Um, the European Parliament and the Council publish a directive or a regulation concerning a family of products that give the essential requirements. By means of a document called mandate, the European Commission requests the European standardization bodies to draw up standards in the field of the products covered by the directive. Mandate 396 is the mandate in the field of machinery. European standardization bodies publish harmonized voluntary standards that give technical requirements for the essential requirement considered by the directive. Once the harmonized standards are published on the official journal of the European Union, they give the presumption of conformity to the essential requirement of that directive. All that remains is to take an overview of the essential requirements and harmonized standards and see how they are interrelated. This is uh, the table of contents of Annex 1 concerning the essential requirements. We have uh, Clause one, essential health and safety requirements. Two, supplementary essential requirements for certain categories of machinery. So, uh, three, supplementary essential requirement of two offset hazards due to mobility of machinery. Four, supplementary essential requirement to offset hazards due to lifting operations. Five, supplementary requirements for machinery intended for underground works and supplementary essential requirements for machinery present in particular hazard due to lifting of person. Uh, let me highlight some fundamental requirements including the general principles. By an iterative process, the manufacturer shares Determine the limits of the machinery. The limits include the intended use and any reasonable foreseeable misuse. The manufacturer shall identify the hazard that can be generated by the machinery. He shall estimate the risks, take into account the severity of the possible injury or damage and the probability of its occurrence. It shall eliminate the hazard or reduce the risk associated with this hazard by application of proceed of protective measures. The manufacturer must apply the following method in the order given. It shall reduce risk as far as possible. It shall take the necessary protective measure in relation to risk that cannot be eliminated. It shall inform users of the residual risk. It shall indicate whether any particular training is required. And it shall specify any needs to provide personal protective equipment. The last sentence is very important to understand how to deal with the essential requirement considered in this annex. The requirement applies when the corresponding hazard exists. Back to the table of contents, let me focus on these points in red. Since we do not deal with foodstuff machines or machines for cosmetics or pharmaceutical products, we do not deal with portable handheld machines, we do not deal with woodworking machines, and we do not deal with lifting machines. The requirements under point one cover the following topics. Control systems, protection against mechanical hazards, required characteristics of guards and protective devices, risks due to other hazards, maintenance information. 
I will mention just a few particular principle of safety integration, materials and products, lighting, ergonomics. Uh, the materials used uh, to construct machinery or products used or created during its use uh, must not endanger person safety and or health. Machinery must be designed and constructed so that uh, there is no area of shadow. Internal parts requiring frequent inspection and adjustment and maintenance area must be provided with appropriate lighting. Under the intended condition of use, the discomfort, fatigue, and physical and psychological stress faced by the operator must be reduced to the minimum possible, taking into account ergonomics principles such as allowing for the variability of the operator's physical dimensions, strength, and stamina, providing enough space for movement of the parts of the operator's body, avoiding a machine determined work rate, avoiding monitoring that requires lengthy concentration, adapting the main machinery interface to the foreseeable characteristics of the operators. The essential requirement concerning the control system refer, for example, to safety and reliability of control system, control devices, starting, stopping, that is normal stop, operational stop, emergency stop. In particular, control system can withstand the intended operating stresses and external influences and that the situation must not result from a fault in the hardware or the software, from errors in the control system logic, and from reasonably foreseeable human error. Particular attention must be given to the following points. <clears throat> the machinery must not start unexpectedly. The parameters of the machinery must not change in an uncontrolled way. The machinery must not be prevented from stopping if the stop command has already been given. No moving parts of the machinery or piece held by the machinery must fall or be ejected. Automatic or manual stopping of the moving parts, whatever they may be, must be unimpeded. The protective devices must remain fully effective or give a stop command. The safety-related parts of the control system may apply in a current way to the wall of assembly of machinery and or partly completed machinery. For cableless control, an automatic stop must be activated when correct control signal are not received, including loss of communication. The essential requirement concerning the protective against mechanical hazard refer, for example, to breakup during operation, <coughs> felling or ejected objects, surfaces, edge and or angles, moving parts and controlled movement, moving parts involved in the process, in particular, the various parts of machinery and their linkage must be able to withstand the stress to which they are subjected when used. Where a risk of rupture or disintegration remains, despite the measure taken, the parts concerned must be mounted, positioned, and or guarded in such a way that any fragments will be contained, preventing hazardous situations. Insofar as the purpose allows, accessible parts of the machinery must have no sharp edge, no sharp angles, and no rough surfaces likely to cause injury. The moving parts of machinery must be designed and constructed in such a way as to prevent a risk of contact, which could lead to accidents or mass where it persists, be fitted with guards or protective devices. 
All necessary steps must be taken to prevent accidental blockage of moving parts involved in the work. And in case where, despite the precaution taken, a blockage is likely to occur, the necessary specific protective device and tools must be provided to enable the equipment to be safely unblocked. Guards of protective devices designed to protect persons against the hazard generated by moving parts involved in the process must be fixed guards or <clears throat> interlocking movable guards or protective devices or a combination of the above. However, when certain moving parts directly involved in the process cannot be made completely inaccessible during operation or to operation requiring operated intervention, such part must be fitted with, with fixed guards or interlocking movable guards, preventing access to those sections of the parts that are not used in the work. And adjustable guards are restricting access to those sections of the moving parts where access is necessary. Special requirements are provided for guards, uh, that is fixed guards, interlocking movable guards, uh, and restricting asset guards, uh, and uh, for uh, protective devices. The essential requirement concerning the risk due to other hazards uh, refers, for example, to electricity supply, static electricity, energy supply over, over than electricity, noise, vibration, and so on. The essential requirements concerning the maintenance refer to machinery maintenance, access to operation position and servicing points, isolation of energy sources, operator intervention, cleaning of internal parts. For example, in particular, we have that Adjustment and maintenance points must be located outside danger zones. It must be possible to carry out adjustment, maintenance, repair, cleaning, and servicing operations while machinery is at a standstill. If one or more of the above conditions cannot be satisfied for technical reasons, Measure must be taken to ensure that these operations can be carried out safely. Automated machinery components, which have to be changed frequently, must be capable of being removed and replaced easily and safely. The essential requirement concerning the information refers to information and wording of machinery warning of residual risks, marking of machinery, and instructions. <clears throat> okay. We see now clause three. Machinery presenting hazard to its mobility must meet all the essential health and safety requirements described in this chapter, chapter three. The requirements under chapter three cover some new topics and other that uh, we have already encountered in chapter one. That is uh, work position, control systems, protection against mechanical hazards, protection against other hazards, and information and indications. First of all, uh, section 3.1 provides the definition of machinery presenting hazards due to its mobility. This machinery covers both the situation where the machinery moves uh, as it works uh, and the situation where the machinery needs to be moved easily from one position to another. The essential requirement concerning the work position refer, for example, to driving position. Visibility from the driving position must be such that the driver can, in complete safety for himself and the exposed persons, operate 
the machinery and its tools in their foreseeable condition of use. Where necessary, appropriate devices must be provided to remedy hazards due to inadequate direct vision. Essential requirement concerning the control system refer, for example, to traveling function, movement of pedestrian controlled machinery. In particular, self-propelled machinery and its trailers must meet the requirements for slowing down, stopping, braking, and immobilization, so as to ensure safety under all the operating low speeds, ground and gradient condition allowed for. The driver must be able to slow down and stop self-propelled machinery by means of a main device. Where um, safety is required uh, in the event of a failure of the main device uh, or in the absence of the energy supply needed to actuate the main device, uh, an emergency device uh, with a full independent and easily accessible control device must be provided for slowing down and stopping. Where safety so requires, a parking device must be provided to render stationary machinery immobile. This device may be combined with one of the devices referred to in the second paragraph, provided that it is purely mechanical. Movement of pedestrian controlled self propelled machinery must be possible only through sustained action on the relevant control device by the driver. In particular, it must not be possible for movement to occur while the engine is being started. The control systems for pedestrian control machinery must be designed in such a way as to minimize the risk arising from inadvertent movement of the machine towards the driver. In particular, crashing, injury for rotating tools, and the speed of travel of the machinery must be compatible with the pace of the driver on foot. The essential requirement concerning the protecting against mechanical hazard refer, for example, to an uncontrolled movement on towing devices. And the essential requirement concerning the protection against other hazards refer, for example, to emission of hazardous substances. And we have that the second and third paragraph of section. 1.5.13 do not apply where the main function of the machinery is the spraying of products. However, the operator must be protected against the risk of exposure of, to such hazardous emissions. The points these points, uh, information and indications, contain the additional requirements concerning uh, the information. Sign, signal, and warning, marking, and instructions. Okay. Machinery intended uh, for underground work must meet all the essential health and safety requirements described in this chapter, chapter five. The requirements under point five cover the following topics. Risks due to lack of stability, movement, control devices, stopping, fire, exhaust emissions. In particular, the second intent of section 3.5.2 is mandatory in respect of machinery, which comprises highly flammable parts. The braking system of machinery intended for use in underground working must be designed and constructed in such a way that this does not produce sparks or cause fires. 
machinery with internal combustion engines for use in underground workings must be fitted only with engines using fuel with a low vaporizing pressure and which exclude any spark of electrical origin. Exhaust emission from internal combustion engines must not be discharged upwards. Okay, we have already done an overview of these essential safety requirements considered, considering uh, machinery as robots. And uh, we have now two questions for you. Question three, a new machinery in order to comply with the machinery directive must comply with all the essential health and safety requirements contained in the annex first. All the essential health and safety requirements contained in the annex first related to the manufacturer's intended use. The essential requirements for which the responding as it exists when the machine is used under the condition foreseen by the manufacturer or under foreseeable abnormal situations. And none of the essential requirement if this complies with the harmonized standards. Give your answer. The, the correct answer is uh, C. Let me uh, read uh, again this uh, answer. Answer C is the essential requirement for which uh, the corresponding hazard exists when the machine is used under the condition foreseen by the manufacturer or under foreseeable abnormal situation. This is the correct answer. I, I show you that uh, this uh, answer is given in the general principle, this one. Okay, last sentence, last sentence of this slide. This statement can be found in the general principle of Act Next 1.1.2. The obligation laid down by the essential requirement only apply when the corresponding hazard exists for the machinery in question when it is used under the condition foreseeable by the manufacturer on in foreseeable abnormal situation. Okay. Um, Federica, you can show the other question, question four. Supplementary essential health and safety requirement considering due to mobility of the machinery when it works on the move or when it needs to be moved easily from one place to another. It works on the move when it needs to be moved easily from one place to another, essential requirement not foreseen for the mobility of machinery. Okay, give you your answer.
annex uh, answer A is the correct answer. The definition of machinery presenting hazard to its mobility is given in section 3.1.1 and it considers both uh, conditions. It's okay. So let me continue my presentation. And uh, after publication of the directive, the Commission requested the Senate Senate to draw up new standards or to amend or revise the existing standards in order to ensure that they satisfy the essential requirements of the directive. A specific sector exists in both SEN and SENALEC. Mm -hmm. There are technical committees responsible for horizontal aspects related to safety of machinery. Particularly, we have SEN Technical Committee 114, safety of machinery. TC-122, economics. TC-169, light and lighting. TC-211, acoustics. TC-406, mechanical products, eco-design methodology. And Senelec TC-44, safety of machinery, electrotechnical aspects. Uh, Technical Committees 114 publish the most important standards, as for example, those uh, shown on the screen. We have standards concerning risk assessment and risk reduction, safety related parts of control systems, emergency stop function, fixed and movable guards, and two hand control devices. Technical Committee 122 published standard on the human body measurement, human physical performance, ergonomics design principles, and a technical report, the last document, concerning the ergonomics of the interaction between human and robotic intelligent and autonomous systems. I will not comment all the standards mentioned uh, in my presentation. You can read uh, the standards later. So I don't comment uh, this, uh, the standard and acoustics. So we have a lot of standards uh, published by TC211. Uh, and this one, uh, Senelec, is with the electrical equipment of machines. For example, these standards are very important for all types of machinery. Functional safety of related related electric, electrical, electronic, and programmable electronic control systems. Electrical equipment of machines. Electrosensitive protective equipment. There are also more than 40 technical committees dealing with specific type of machines. In these slides, I wanted to consider only those dealing with construction machines. In particular, we have uh, TC-121, welding and allied processes. 123, lasers and photonics. 151, construction equipment and building material machines. 196, mining machinery and equipment. 310, advanced automation technologies and their applications. 438, additive manufacturing. And two Senelec technical committees, TC. 26, electric welding, and TC116, safety and environmental aspects of motor operated electric tools, and an ISO technical committee 299 robotics. TC121 on welding and the light processes published more than 30, uh, 340 standards concerning welding quality requirements for fusion welding of metallic materials, specification and qualification of welding procedures for metallic materials, 
welding consumable, welded constructions, not the destructive testing of welds, and health and safety in welding and allied processes. 123 published, among others, a standard on laser processing machines. Allowed me to skip this technical committees for now, as we will deal with it, uh, these committees later. TC196 published standards, for example, on mobile machines working underground mobile extracting machine at a face, uh, tunneling machines. To see 438 uh, published standard uh, on additive manufacturing, port positioning, coordinates and orientation, laser-based powder, bed fusion of metals, uh, finished part properties, uh, and environment uh, health and safety. Senelec TC26 published a standard in parts concerning the arc welding equipment. And TC116 published a standard on robotic battery powder electrical stone movers. We have these two technical committees that work under the agreement. Sen TC310 published a standard, a nice standard in parts on the safety requirements for industrial robots. At the international level, ISO TC 299 published a vocabulary. Some performance standards on particular types of robots, such as manipulating industrial robots, collaborative robots, and service robots. And now we have um, this technical committee 151 on construction equipment and building materials machines. This technical committee deserves a closer look. It deals with standardization in the field of safety of machines and equipment used on construction sites. This is the structure of the technical committee where WG8 is in charge of writing standards on concrete preparation and handling equipment. Uh, its work program includes the following three standards concerning conveying and spraying and placing machines for concrete and mortar, concrete compactors for moving machines, uh, and track mixers. So, I will conclude my presentation by showing you two typical table of context of harmonized standards for the machinery directly. The first standard was published more than 10 years ago. This EN on conveying, spraying, and placing machines for concrete and mortar. Its introduction specifies that it's a type C standard whose provisions take precedence over those of type A or type B standards. After the three clauses common to all voluntary technical standards, the scope, uh, normative references, and term and definition, these old standards present a clause four, a list of significant hazards, clause five on safety requirements, Clause 6 uh, on verification of safety requirements. Clause 7 on information to be provided, including uh, instructions. Uh, the standard contains an optional normative annex on noise test code and the mandatory and informative annex ZA, which correlates the standard with the direct. Before reading an ZA, let me read the two sentences always in the foreword of this type of standard, also in the more recent ones. Uh, this document has been prepared under a mandate given to send by the European Commission and the European Free Trade Association and uh, supports essential requirements of uh, European directives. 
correlation people with European directives to informative annex AA, which is integral part of this document. But let me read the, the scope of this standard. This European standard specifies safety requirements for conveying machines, frame machines, placing machines, and delivery line systems for concrete and mortar as defined in the definition shown on the screen. The machinery can be stationary or mobile, but this European standard does not cover machines that are mobile during conveying, spraying, and placing them. Cabins for any machines covered by the standard. Additional function beyond conveying, spraying, and placing concrete at mortar. Requirements for operation in tunnels. Support structures, not exclusively designed for the use with concrete distribution booms. The second uh, sub clause is very important because it says that uh, this European standard deals with all significant hazard, hazard situation, and even relevant to conveying, spraying, and placing machine when they are used as intended and under the condition of misuse, which are reasonably foreseeable by the manufacturer. To understand uh, which essential requirements of the directive are covered by this standard, we need to read table one containing the list of significant hazards together with a table in Sand Guide 414, which correlates all the hazards with the essential requirement of the directive. For example, hazard crashing in the table one of the standard, we have crashing in the table of the guide, Sand Guide, related to uh, clause 1.3 of Annex 1, shearing in table one of the standard uh, is related uh, in the second table uh, to the same clause of the annex one and so on. The second standard uh, was published recently in January 2021. It is let track mixer. After the three common clauses, the standard uh, present uh, clause four on safety requirements, clause five on verification to, of safety requirements, and clause six uh, on information to be provided. It presents also the informative annex, include uh, the normative annex on noise test code and the mandatory and informative Annex ZA. In this case, Annex ZA correlates this standard directly with the essential requirement of the directive. In addition, we have uh, a new Annex C, in, uh, um, no, Annex D, informative, list of significant standard that in the old standard was closed before. In the first column of the table, we have all the essential requirements of the directive that are considered relevant. In the second column, we have the clause where the standards provide technical requirements to support the essential requirements. On the first page of Annex AA, we find, summarize all the information I tried to give you during my presentation. Let's uh, look at them together. This European standard has been prepared under a commission standardization request to provide one voluntary means of conformity to essential requirements of machine and directive. Once the standard is cited in the official journal of the European Union under that directive, compliance with the normative clauses of the standard confers within the limits of the scope of the standard a presumption of conformity with the corresponding essential requirements of that directive. Finally, in the first warning, we note that the presumption 
definition of conformity stay valid only as long as a reference to this European standard is maintained in the list published in the official journal of European Union. Users of these standards should consult frequently the latest list published in the official journal of the European Union. Okay, I leave you with a brief cytography and we have another question for you. What does the Annex A contain? A correspondence between the relevant essential requirement of the machinery directive and the references in the standard that provide requirements for them. The reference to the machinery directive, the essential requirement not covered in the standard, the applicable national legislation. Give your answer. The correct answer is A. Uh, the new Annex ZA required some years ago by the European Commission to send and send a lecture. Consider a table listing all relevant essential requirements and the clauses in the standard where technical requirements comply with the essential requirements. In this way, the correspondence between the harmonized standard and the directive is more clear, clearer and immediately evident. Okay, if you consider useful this, uh, this presentation, uh, a new uni training is under construction. We can focus on, uh, on benefits, data, and innovation of the new regulation on machinery published uh, last month. I, I thank you for your attention. I am at your disposal. Okay, okay, so thank you, Giovanni. Uh, we hope to have given you uh, some useful references today. Um, I don't know if anyone from the audience has any question or also um, uh, doubts, curiosity, or general comments. Uh, we can uh, take uh, the five minutes to answer your questions, uh, so if you want, Raise your hand or also you can use the chat as you would prefer. Nothing, everything was clear, so I hope. we can consider this. I don't see any raised hand or any comments in the chat. Nothing. Okay, so if everything was clear, uh, I'd say that this was a very good result. Uh, we hope you're not feeling over overwhelmed uh, by all this information. We know that it can be not that easy at the beginning, uh, but if you have also some questions later on, please um, feel free to reach me. Uh, so if you don't have any questions, uh, I can uh, close here this, uh, this training. Uh, I thank you again for the, for the participation and uh, hope a nice day ahead and a nice week ahead. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye.